What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the Locker Room, week four of the fifth season of the GBA. This is the show where I talk about the set that I'm going to be bringing in my upcoming GBA match for the week. This week, we're facing off against the New York Mankeys and their coach, Shady Penguin. Shady Penguin, of course, you guys all know him. Poketuber superstar, Jonathan from Pokemon Channel. I think, is that what we call it? Pokemon Channel? Uh, casted the uh, the worlds this se this last season, so big name in uh, in Poketubing, and really excited to get to battle him again. I've actually uh, I've only ever battled Shady once, and it wasn't actually in league format. It was uh, a long time ago when my channel was really small. I, I was privileged enough to to get a chance to fight him, follow him on Twitter, and when he tweets out, you ask him to battle, and he's like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, and then we battled, and it was cool, and then there was a disconnect, but whatever. <laughs> you guys know my mo. Anyway, so uh, this week. His team is uh, is pretty scary. I'm doing a new thing with my layout, which you can see right above me. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Right above me here, I'm uh, I'm pointing out. Uh, I got their I got their team roster on the screen for you guys, and I hope you like it. Uh, it took surprisingly long time for me to do because I'm not very good at this whole video editing. Phone, Mr. Phone, you get one. <laughs> you get one, Mr. Phone. Okay, so so this uh, this week was really hard for team prep actually so I mean you guys look at the team and you can kinda see it Shady Penguin is a scary good drafter uh, I mean he really is and and it shows he's got a lot of draft experience he's been in the GBA since season one uh, he was in the UCL multiple times I think maybe three time playoff runs from the Mankeys in the GBA and he got into the UCL playoffs this guy has a, a track record of winning consistently and it's not hard to see why. I mean, look at this team. The The first thing that came to my mind, before I show you guys my team, I got to talk through my thought process and how I attack it. First, I start running calcs. Uh, I run a calc on pretty much everything. Um, I look at the offensive Pokemon. I kind of run their sets as if they were scarfed, banded, life orbed, and sometimes I'll throw in an expert belt. And then I look at the defensive Mon. I run if they're especially defensive, physically defensive, uh, with leftovers, maybe assault vests. And I try and look at the numbers coming through my mon to their mon. Here's why Shady's team is so hard to do that. I can just, I can literally just go through his team. Jirachi. How, how am I going to calc this? This thing could be physically defensive, specially defensive. This thing can be a pivot and can, it can run assault vest. It's not unusual. It could be physically offensive, specially offensive, mixed. It can run anything. It's so versatile. And, and you need to prepare and plan for the potential that it can it can get status going on you it can it can run um, potential flinch hacks it's just this thing is so hard to prep for we move on we got Rotom H again can be defensive on either side of the spectrum it could be scarfed offensive it could be specs offensive all very common sets for Rotom um, we have Hitmon top his only rapid spinner. Uh, which I'm going to use to my advantage in preparing for this team, as you guys will see. We have Zygarde, who is who could be Coil set, it could be Dragon Dance set. We have Miss Magius, um, a little bit less of a threat. Personally, I'm not too scared of him. I'll go over all of this a little bit more. Alakazam, again, really powerful, fast sweeper. Grand Bull could be offensive, could be defensive. <laughs> we got Rhyperior, could be offensive, could be defensive, Sharpedo is a little bit more obvious, but still very hard to prep for, Melodic could be defensive on either side of the scale, could be offensive, he's done it before, and we got Mega Venusaur, who could be defensive on both sides, and offensive on both sides, are you kidding me, this team is so hard to prepare for, so I put in a lot of time this week, and, um, and I came out with a game plan, I emerged with a game plan, and... I say this with all the love in my heart, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I think it's one of my more, it's one of my more out there, but it's very potential, very potentially successful game plan, and I just need to kind of, I need to share with you guys, I need to kind of go over why, so the first thing I did in building out the core of my team was to look at what I needed defensively, so the biggest offensive threats on my opponent's team are the Mega Venusaur and the Zygarde and the Alakazam. Everything else is a little bit less 
terrifying. Uh, they, they all have very good sets, but a little bit less terrifying. Simple solution to the Venusaur is Blissey. Uh, there's no set of Venusaur, even physically offensive, that, that really threatens um, a defensive Blissey. So, so that's what I did. I started off from the core. Mega Venusaur is a pretty likely bring. He's brought it quite a lot. Um, I believe every week. Then we see um, Alakazam can also be walled pretty well by Blissey. Now, a Specs Alakazam, a Psyshock will hurt and will two-hit KO my Blissey. But if he's a Specs Alakazam, then I can play around that. I have answers for that. The Zygarde is a big issue because looking into it, it can two-hit KO my Hippowdon. Um, not with its primary stab offensive moves in Earthquake and Outrage, but in its potential to carry Grass Knot as coverage, it can do the KO uh, without any investment. So, building from there and then looking at the rest of the team, I had to look at my defense and I had to decide what is going to work, what is going to, to force him to, to waste moves with his offensive mod and build me enough pressure and enough the capacity to weaken his Pokemon so I can go for a sweep. And so that's usually how I try and start with my team building. That's the kind of team I have. I play a semi-stall balance team. Um, semi-stall in the sense that more of my Pokemon are defensive, but defensively oriented. You look at Latios, Vaporeon, Amoongus, Blissey, Aromatisse, Rhydon, and Hippowdon. They're all very bulky Pokemon. I would stress, uh, people keep talking about the lack of offense though, but go ahead and look at those offensive stats of those Pokemon, I think you guys will be impressed. People people tell me a lot that they're, they feel I'm lacking in offense. Um, just because I can switch into a defensive threat and not have to go for an attack, doesn't mean they can't be offensive. You know, Hippowdon with 112 base attack and Vaporeon with 110 base special attack, Rhydon, let's... Like, don't even, this guy's got 120, 130, 120, uh, attack, I mean, th it's there, guys, it's there, I just play a style where I'm really, I'm slow playing, I'm whittling, and I'm, I'm chipping, and that's usually how I kind of look at things, so, I I'm gonna bring up the, uh, the team, the screen here so that you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about, this is the team I am looking to bring this week, uh, I'm bringing Remix, Decisions, Trip, Eggington, Cuddles, and the Red One. And immediately, you guys might be kind of noticing, you know, he, Geo Shady's got some pretty crazy offensive threats. Uh, Jirachi very frequently goes physically offensive. The um, the Hitmon top could be like max HP, max attack. The Zygarde massive uh, offensive threat there. The Rhyperior. So to answer that, I run Trip. Fully HP, fully defense, relaxed investment there. I'm running Foul Play, Hidden Power, Ice, Sludge Bomb, and Giga Drain. So here's the thing. Trip can switch in and survive two hits from a non-boosted Zygarde. And uh, I had to pack the Hidden Power Ice to try and hit it back as hard as possible. Uh, the reason I'm running the Assault Vest is to give me a potential switch into some of his other special attackers. It makes me pretty much wall the Mega Venusaur, uh, which I'm also walling with the Eggington because Venusaur is not a threat you want to take lightly. This thing has a lot of move options. Trip is a great switch into it. I can't really do a whole lot back to it, really. Um, Foul Play and Hidden Power Ice kind of being my best options there. But it's still, it's still a really safe switch in for me. It can force him to switch out. It gives me just a slow down button for him. Uh, in addition to that, he can take not... He actually, this is really funny when I ran my calcs. With this exact set on trip, Psyshock and Psychic from a Life Orb Zam do an identical amount of damage. Number for number, roll for roll, absolutely identical. There's not a single roll in there that is different. Absolutely bizarre. Psychic and Psyshock, who would have thought? So, um, with this set, it allows me to eat up any of the non Psyshock moves by an Alakazam, so if I bait maybe a, um, a Shadow Ball out of him, I can eat that up with with Trip. I I've been talking a lot here. i got to get into the, the meat and potatoes of this. I'm running a set that I think it's really ballsy, and it might work. It might not, 
but it might, and I really hope it does. Here was my thought process about the game. I need to start from turn one and look at... I, I have my defenses in order with Eggington and Trip to try and take his, his physically offensive Mon on and his specially offensive Mon on. They can break through, and that's kind of where the other Pokemon come in. It's a very offensive week for me this week, guys. Very offensive. Remix, of course, is the standard choice scarf. Looking at the uh, the IVs that I have here, it's a little bit wrong because in the game itself... Can I do this? Uh, let's switch over. Locker room. And, um... What do I press? This. Yeah? No? There we go. Uh, as you can see here, I'm actually running a Hidden Power Ice variety of Remix. So, um, I do... The, part of the reason for that, I, I just think Hidden Power Ice is the most effective thing for his team. Things I might switch in on that could have a Hidden Power. Uh, as Alakazam, potentially. You know, I, I just... I, I'm not sure why, necessarily. I just think for this potential matchup, just because I'm a little scared of Zygarde. Zygarde, to me, is, is my biggest fear. I gotta preserve my Remix because I don't want to allow, say... A weakness policy Zygarde to pop off with a with a Dragon Dance underneath its belt because then it's going to outspeed everything on my team and can wreck shop. So Ditto is the ultimate revenge there. It really threatens him from setting up with anyone, even a Calm Mind uh, Alakazam because the beauty of this Ditto set is that running max HP at that, he actually has more health than a lot of the Mon on his team. Um, if I switch in on a Rotom, I actually have more health than a non-defensive Rotom. I have more health than that. Um, I have more health than the Alakazam, I have more health than the Miss Magus, but I really don't think he's going to bring Miss Magus. Um, I think I have more health than a Hitmontop, I'm not 100% sure. So the team you're looking at here came after running my Calyx multiple times and trying to see how I have to take this. This is actually kind of the second team I built. I built another one, but I felt like this one is better. But this one is crazier, guys, and this is, has to be where I went. I'm going to reveal it now. We're running special Entei this week with Weakness Policy, Eruption, Hidden Power Ice, Solar Beam, and Sunny Day. This thing is going to be timid, it's going to be max special attack, and I am nervous, but I'm excited. I'm nerve-sighted, guys, because this is my big offensive threat that people um, have a hard time preparing for. And looking at his team, he has a lot of answers for it. And I think he's going to bring a fair number of them. Um, I think the Rotom Heat is coming. The reason I think that is because Cuddles and Decisions are both, in theory, walled by it. Uh, not walled. They're, they, it's a good check to both of those Pokemon. However, both of those Pokemon can run rock coverage to try and hit it pretty hard. So maybe he won't bring it. The thing is, if he does bring it, he pretty much has to bring Hitmontop. And I don't think he wants to bring Hitmontop. I've run the Calx. Hitmontop does not do well against my team. It cannot touch Trip. It can't touch it. It's... Intimidate is, while useful, not incredible. Remix is a safe switch in for days to get rid of rocks for myself. It's just not a great situation for him. I think he's going to want to set up rocks, and I think he's going to want to do it early. So one of the things I'm envisioning is that he brings Jirachi. He's brought it pretty much every week. I think he brings Melodic, because he's brought it pretty much every week. I think he brings Venusaur. I think he brings Sharpedo. And then it gets a little less clear. Because Sharpedo is his late game sweeper. He's got Melodic, who is a great wall against Entei. He's got Jirachi, who is kind of, could be anything. A mixed offensive would mean trouble for uh, a lot of the moms on my team. However, it's pretty well walled by my two walls right now. So I think he's going to run it maybe a little more defensive. Stealth Rock variant. The Venusaur, just because it's the Destroyer of Worlds, I think he's going to bring it. Then we come down to the last two Pokemon. Now, Alakazam... That Focus Sash Alakazam is a problem, and for it, I'm bringing Latias. Latias has enough speed to outspeed the Jirachi. I believe that's where I placed my number. Yeah, uh, one, 168. Just to outspeed the Jirachi. Um, I, I've done this with most of my Mon. I've made it pr a priority to outspeed Jirachi, just so that I'm not dealing with, um, as you can see, uh, Entei, or sorry, Cuddles here only being 85 speed. 
but he will mega evolve to be 105, so this set will bring me to 168, which will outspeed the Jirachi if it's timid or jolly at max speed. I don't want to be getting flinch hacks by this guy. If he's going to run Scarf, great. I'll figure that out immediately, and then my walls are a lot safer because it's going to lack a lot of power. Um... Beyond that, the speed tiers, I'm not really worried. I don't think he's going to bring Miss Magus. It's, it doesn't really do much to my team. A lot of my team can one or two hit KO it, even some of the defensive mon. It can't do a whole lot to me. There's always the risk of it being, you know, kind of a surprise set. I know it can carry Destiny Bond, but I, I just, I'm really not that scared of it. So, so the red one comes... It's going to get outsped by Miss Magus, but he wouldn't know that necessarily because I'm 110 speed. So it's it's designed the way it is. As you can see here, Draco Meteor, Psychic, Sucker Punch, and Recover. This is a great offensive check to the Venusaur. Uh, the Draco Meteor landing on the Jirachi with a follow-up Sucker Punch on the potential U-turn has the chance to kill Jirachi if it's not defensive after some Stealth Rock damage. The Sucker Punch, I think, will catch things really off guard. It's also a good 1v1 check to Alakazam. Because Alakazam can't kill it with just one Shadow Ball unless it doesn't have... Um, unless it doesn't... Unless it's running Life Orb. If it's Life Orb, I'll kind of discover that and then I can answer it in other ways. Uh, such as a Quick Attack from Cuddles. The Sucker Punch is so that if it wants to switch in on Draco or something, I can follow up with the Sucker Punch and kill it. In that scenario, it's Draco first, in, in, and with this setup with the Life Orb, it will kill it. If it doesn't kill it, then it would kill me by outspeeding me next turn, so I, Dra I Sucker Punch it instead. So it's a good Alakazam check for me. It's a good uh, Zygarde check because a Draco Meteor, while it won't one-hit KO, um, I will outspeed and get a massive amount of damage off on it. I can clean up with it later. So it's a it's one of my offensive checks to two of the biggest threats on his team, the Alakazam and the Zygarde. Um, I'm bringing Cuddles because I really want that strong priority. He does have some fast sweepers on his team, and I need that. I'm bringing Earthquake because it, uh, it allows me to check the Jirachi, who I will outspeed unless it's Scarfed. It's a super effective hit on the Rhyperior. Here's the thing, I could, people might be thinking, well, why aren't you bringing Close Combat? Because Close Combat hits um, the Sharpedo, super effective. It hits the the Rhyperior, super effective, whereas the Earthquake really only hits Jirachi. The reason is, I go for return against everyone except Jirachi, Rhyperior, and, um, and Sharpedo, who have better moves. However, return is going to kill Sharpedo, and I'm not staying in with Cuddles against a Rhyperior. There's no way. There's no way I do that. So Earthquake is better because it is a good answer to Celebi, not Celebi, to Jirachi. So that's why I'm running that set. Trip is a pretty standard set. I showed it a minute ago. Uh, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Hidden Power, Ice for the Zygarde. I'm really preparing hard for the Zygarde, but I really want to talk now about the Entei set. Decisions with the Eruption, Hidden Power, Ice, Solar Beam, Sunny Day. Here's how I envision. He knows how important rocks are to my team. I think he leads with a rock setter. That could be Jirachi, or it could be um, Rhyperior. I need to know the team matchup to know how this goes down, but I think I lead with Ente. And here's what. He's going to be bringing Melodic, and Melodic is a problem for my team. It's a problem. Nothing can really just utterly devastate it. And those Scalds, man. Scalds best move in the game. It's so good. So, I lead with Decisions. I don't think he'll lead with Melodic. If he does, I gotta right away kick off Clan Alpha. My goal is when Entei is against a Latios one-on-one, -on -one, I click Sunny Day. I'm assuming he's going to click Scald. If he does, if he doesn't overpredict and he clicks Scald in the sun, shouldn't do more than about 30%, I activate weakness policy, which allows me to be strong enough to kill with a solar beam after rocks damage or some chip. So, the, the scenario I envision is he leads with a rock setter. If it's Jirachi, um, I don't think about it, I have to click Eruption. And I either take out that Jirachi right away, um, 
if maybe he's not expecting something, maybe he's scarf and he U-turns out or, or something, but I get that immediate damage off. Granbull is another physical, physically defensive Entei counter. Granbull might come in. If it comes in on an eruption, that thing is dead. The Rhyperior, if it comes in on an eruption, another eruption will kill it. The Melodic will survive and then initiate the plan that I'm sort of talking about here with Sunny Day, activate my weakness policy, and then pray that he stays in and I kill it with Solar Beam. Um, the beauty here is that Ante does outspeed a lot of his team, and if this goes to plan and I do activate that weakness policy, it's going to be hard for him to, to find a switch in. Because even if he predicts the Solar Beam and switches into Rotom, Rotom dies from a Solar Beam and then an Eruption at plus two. If he switches into Zygarde, I have Hidden Power Ice for it, so it'll eat up the Solar Beam and, it, uh, and the Eruption, but it'll die to the Hidden Power Ice. Uh, hit him on top. Dies. Granbull dies. Rhyperior cannot take the Solar Beam and really doesn't take the Eruption that well either. The Mega Venusaur dies. The Sharpedo dies and I'll outspeed it until it gets a Protect off. And even then, in the sun, that Waterfall is not doing jack. So, it really is this turnaround check. Where before, he has lots of really easy answer switch-ins to the, the Sacred Fire. Um, I think... Melodic is probably his best switch in. Uh, actually, no, Grand Bull's pretty good because he could go Grand Bull, eat up a Sacred Fire, take next to nothing from it while I'm intimidated and heal Bell it off. Um, but I think he would probably want the burn on the Melodic. So I think Melodic is the primary switch in, which is why I have to. This is my way to deal with it. Because one on one trip will take it on too, but it's slow and there's going to be a lot of recovering going on. And I just don't think it's a great. I need to get rid of that Melodic, it's a big problem, and it gives me the potential to set up for a sweep, and Entei can really do a number under the sun uh, with this set. Absolutely can destroy the team, so I need, though, to initiate it in a safe manner. I think I need to lead with decisions and try and set this up. It would be really bad if he leads with something that decisions doesn't have a good matchup against. Um, maybe like a an offensive Rotom Heat would be a big... Would, would be kind of bad for me. Um, I would probably lose the option to go straight away for the sunny day and then go for the solar beam. It'd probably hit me pretty hard with a with a volt switch. It would it would mess with things. It would definitely mess with things. But I still I I'm gonna have to see how it goes uh, on game day. I'm battling Shady tomorrow. But I really honestly envision this working. I see how it could I see how it could set up and. Shady plays a very intelligent game plan around threats, and I think he knows Decisions is a threat. I think he's going to bring answers to it, and I think as many of those answers as possible that can also answer Cuddles, he's going to do that. So, it's hard to see, it's hard to know. Um, I really do think he's bringing Jirachi, Mega Venusaur, Melodic, and Sharpedo, and gun to my head, the other two Pokemon he's bringing, Zygarde, because I think it matches up against my team best. And, oh man, the sixth Pokemon. Rotom Heat or Alakazam. I don't think he's going to bring the Rhyperior. He hasn't brought it yet. No, he's brought it once. Has he brought it? No, you know, I don't think he's going to bring Rotom Heat because if he brings Rotom Heat, he has to bring Hitmontop, and he's not bringing Hitmontop. But if he's bringing him, then maybe, you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it more, I'm convincing myself, I think he'll probably bring the Alakazam. Regardless, I, ha I do have answers to all of these Pokemon. I just really don't think he's going to bring. Pretty much the only thing here I can't see him bringing is the Miss Magius. Just because it's, I mean, like, it hits pretty hard. It, you know, it's fast, but it's frail. It'll die. Um, who knows? Uh, it could be, it could potentially be, uh, be that it takes something out with a, with a Destiny Bond or something. We'll see. Either way, guys, that's the team I'm bringing this week. Um, I hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm really excited to, to see it in action. I'm, I'm really excited for this for this match this week. Um, we have them all here in beautiful, ready-to-go uh, fashion. Uh, the one thing, did I... Yeah, okay, I didn't really talk about the Eggington set here. Well, did I? I don't remember. I'm kind of trailing here. Um, the, the Stealth Rock on it. I, I actually opted to get rid of that and go for the Thunder Wave. Uh, just when I got this gen. Um, because I was kind of, I was thinking about it. And the, 
I don't see a scenario where I'm going to stealth rock with Eggington. Did I talk? I don't remember if I talked about this or not. Either way, guys, this is the team. This is the team for the week. I'm going to bring them into the battle box. If there's anything else for me to uh, adjust here, um, I'm probably going to have to check and see. Check on happiness and stuff like that. But they are in the battle box. We're going to be ready to go for a battle with Shady t uh, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, I think. Thursday? Yes. Yes, Battling the Shady tomorrow, 7.15 p.m. My time, 10.15 p.m. You guys don't care about this. Anyway, as always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.